Alright everyone, welcome back. So, it's time for the 2023-2024 season review for my favorite team, the Philadelphia Flyers. So, with, with Philadelphia, this is a year where I expected, and I said in so many videos during last offseason and at the beginning of the season, that this should be a year where we're pretty bad. Like, we should have not been good this year. We should have been in the company of Anaheim, Chicago. Not as bad as them, because I still think we have a, a decent roster. But I still thought we would have been a team that pretty much would have just been, you know, bottom, bottom five in the league, honestly. And I was okay with that. I was perfectly fine with that. Drafting Mitchkov, it gave us some time to really kind of um, build up the pool a little bit. Build up the offense, the defense. Uh, that went out the window, didn't it? Um, they went 38, 33, and 11 this year for 87 points. They were 21st in the NHL. So, yeah, no, they were definitely not in the bottom five. They weren't in the bottom 10 either. They were, I think, were, I think if you do it, bottom 12. They were the 12th team. Um, but, yeah, it, this was a fun year, though. I, I will say this. This was a very fun year to watch this team. It was the first time, and I would say probably four or five years, that I've actually enjoyed watching the Flyers. Like, in previous years, like, I would just aimlessly make Flyers videos and be like, eh, you know, I'm the... I didn't like Chuck Fletcher. I wasn't a fan of a lot of the other guys. Level one, you sneeze in the middle of the video. But I didn't like Chuck Fletcher. I wasn't a fan of uh, Tortorella in the first season. And things were looking too great. They brought in Briere. Now I started really enjoying it this year. Um, but I really wish we would have made the playoffs. Because that would have made this season at least not a waste. They had a .530 points percentage. Which was ranked 21st. You can tell the pattern if you've been watching these videos. They have scored 235 goals and led in 261 for a minus 26 difference. Now, primarily that, that, that negative difference came in the last like 20 games of the season. Um, a, a lot of the stats before this team really started struggling were very good. They were. Most of the stats were pretty good. They were 20-17-4 at home, 18-16-7 on the road. They, for some reason, were weird at home. Like, they wouldn't win a lot on the on the, at home. On the road, their road record was pretty solid until the last, like, 15 games of the season. Um, again, I'm, you're, you're going to see me refer to that last 15 games of the season a lot here, but let me get through my stats before I get into that. Uh, they scored a 2.82 goals for per game on average, which was ranked 27. This team can't score. This team couldn't score to save their lives. They didn't have anyone who scored above 30 goals besides Travis Konechny. Um, Obviously, for a team that's trying to make the playoffs, even though we didn't think they would, you obviously need to have more than one 30-goal scorer. Uh, they did 3.15 goals against, which was 19th. Uh, if, had it not been for what happened in the downward of the season, like again, the last 15 games, I think these numbers would be better, especially the goals against per average. Uh, power play was horrible the entire year. A 12.2 power play percentage, which was ranked last in the NHL. But their penalty kill was fourth with 83.4. So, the penalty kill was fun. Like, seeing all the shorthanded goals, that was fun. Like, the guys like Ryan Paling became a big shorthanded guy. Other guys in this team looked fun, too, in that remark. But power play was absolutely horrendous. Like, I said in a lot of the, in, like, a lot of the Flyers games that I would watch, I think I've said it on the videos here on the channel, we'd get a power play, and I'd be like, oh, man, you're punishing us with a, with a freaking power play, really? I would say that. I'm like, why are you punishing us with making us watch a, fly, a Flyers power play? Because it was just so horrendous to watch. It was just so, it was so bad to watch. Like, I, I, I cannot say it enough. It was very painful. I'd actually be kind of happy if we, got a, if we got a penalty against us because we were better on the penalty kill than we were on the power play. It was, it, it's, it, that's not healthy. That's not healthy. Um, and again, as I said a lot, if it weren't for the last, like, 15, 20 games of the season, this team would have been in the playoffs. I don't think they would have done anything. If they played the Rangers, they would have probably lost in five. Um, if they played the Hurricanes, they probably would have had the same result as the Islanders, honestly. But the Flyers falling off played a big role in why the, the Capitals and the Islanders got into the playoffs. I think, I think, I gotta be honest, I think the Islanders and Capitals should thank the Flyers for 
actually, the Caps should really be thanking the Flyers. But regardless, yeah, the last 15 games of the year were very frustrating. And it came off of a time where they played a lot of really good teams. Like, I, they played, like, I think they played, like, Toronto, Boston. They played, like, all the top teams in the Eastern Conference and the Metro. They came out and won, I'd say, I think, three of the, I think it was, like, I think it was, like, eight games. We won, like, four of them. We won half of them. Uh, ESPN, I remember projected us to not win any of them, and I was like, okay, this, that, that's good. Um, now we just got to be, like, kind of 500 into the last couple of games, and we weren't. Uh, we were, like, 2-9 and nine in the last, like, 11 games of the season, and they were, and we were playing teams that were below us, most of, for the most part. Like, we played Montreal, lost 9-3, played Chicago, lost, like, 3-1. Like, it felt to me that in those last couple of games, this team just got tired. That genuinely was what it felt like watching these games. And the system that Tortorella played this year played a big factor in that. And I'm not mad at Tortorella whatsoever. He had a great, he had a great job this season. Um, I do think he should have at least gotten a little bit more votes, even though the team fell out of the fell out of the playoffs in the last like few games of the season. But, you know, take it what you will. So in terms of guys who scored this year, guys were leading scorers. Travis Konechny led this team again for, I think, the third or fourth straight season in a row. Konechny, 76 games played, 33 goals, 35 assists, 68 points. There's a lot of rumors in where Konechny's going to get traded to. I don't think he will get traded. It would shock me. Um, but again, anything's possible, I guess. I don't want him to trade Konechny. He's been here for a very long time. Um, I think they should keep him at least for a few more years and see where we're at then. Owen Tippett, 78 games played, 28 goals, 25 assists, 53 points. I thought Tippett, I think Tippett had a good year. I think it was about the same as his production last year, but he's turned out to be a pretty solid player in that Claude Giroux trade, which, by the way, I've been going back and watching some of my, some, some of my old videos, like some of the old news videos and reacting to them. I remember when I was a freshman, I hated the Claude Giroux trade. Um... Not really anymore, to be honest. Although I do wish Giroux was still in Philly. Uh, Joel Farabee, 82 games played, 22 goals, 28 assists, 50 points. There were reports at the beginning of the season that Farabee was very unhappy with the Flyers. Um, I think those reports have gone. I don't think that's... I think that's gone by the wayside, in my opinion. I don't think that's relevant anymore. Travis Sanheim had an awesome year. Uh, 81 games played, 10 goals, 34 assists, 44 points. He played spectacular the entire season. Um... I thought that, you know, he might be a little bit overpaid, might not be, you know, worth his money, but I thought he had a really good season. I don't expect for him to be like that next year, probably get a little bit worse and fall a little bit back down to the reality, but he had a pretty solid year this year. He's one of the guys who flourished under Tortorella's system for sure. Morgan Frost. Frost had a lot of controversy this year with Tortorella, but I think that towards the end, he really redeemed himself. 71 games played, 13 goals, 28 assists, 41 points. I think that I think that Frost had a pretty good year as well. I think that there's room for improvement there as well. I think he's definitely going to get better. Uh, Scott Lawton, 82 games played, 13 goals, 26 assists, 39 points. There will always be that rumor of Scott Lawton getting traded. I genuinely don't think it happens. I can't see it. Um, so we'll we'll see there if you know what happens with Scott Lawton, but um, I don't think he gets traded. Sean Couturier though might. And Couturier, there's a good chance that we could very well see the newly named Philly captain not be in Philly either next year or the following year. So Couturier, 74 games played, 11 goals, 27 assists, 38 points. Listen, I know that ever since the uh, he was named captain, he really didn't do a ton. Tortorella scratched him, put him on the fourth line. You know, there was a lot of that. That, that, was, a, that was a rough time to be a Flyers fan. But I do think that I think the improvement can be there. We got to realize that Couturier was one of the players that missed like the last like two seasons. Like he didn't play last year. He didn't play 21-22. So it's, it, and usually when guys are out for that long with an injury, they don't usually come back. So first off, give props to Couturier for coming back. And second, I'd say putting up 38 points in 74 games is a pretty good stat line considering the fact that he was out for two seasons uh, the, the previous years before. So if the production doesn't get better after that, then you can start thinking about it. But with the way to, with the way Couturier was treated this year, it wouldn't surprise me if the if the Flyers or if or actually no, not not even the Flyers. If he 
wants to leave, it wouldn't surprise me. Um, but it would suck because I, I, I've been fighting for Couturier since day one. Um, I understand that he hasn't done much when he, since he's been named the captain, but I do think that, you know, you got to look at some context as well. Uh, Tyson Forster had a pretty good season, 77 games played, 20 goals, 13 assists, 33 points. I think there's much room for improvement there too with Forster. He looked great, um, towards the end of the season. And I think that he's one of the guys that you had to be very happy about, uh, with the Philadelphia Flyers. I think there's a few young guys on this team and I know that the pool isn't as great as you want it to be, but I think there's a few young guys on this team who, if they're managed right before Mitch Koff comes in, we could be a pretty good hockey team. We'll see, though. Uh, Cam York, 82 games played, 10 goals, 20 assists, 30 points. York had a pretty good year for improvement. Um, I think that the numbers offensively don't really show that, but I think he's become a better defenseman this year. Uh, had, a, had a great season overall. And then finally, Cam Atkinson. Atkinson... Um, is a guy that I'm not surprised if he gets bought out this summer or if they keep him around for one year or try and trade him, honestly. Uh, but Atkinson, 70 games played, 13 goals, 15 assists, 28 points. He was the same he missed last year entirely. Uh, this year, I thought that considering the facts, uh, he struggled a lot this year, but I think that I think next year will be better for him for sure. So yeah, I mean, that's the offense. Not a whole lot of star-studded scorers there. Didn't even have a 70-point guy. Um, honestly, what we saw a lot was the Flyers would just outwork you. That's simply what their playing style was the entire season. So I guess it makes sense why they really didn't make the playoffs because they just got tired. Like I, I don't blame them, but it's still incredibly frustrating. If you're going to make a, if you're going to try and make the playoffs, please make the damn playoffs. Like it, now we have the number 12 draft pick. Okay. Um, had we been bottom five, we would have been top five right now. Probably. Um, it, I, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Truly. It, 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 it makes me a little bit annoyed, but I guess we really can't change it now. Uh, goalies goalies was the most insane thing I've ever seen this year. Uh, you had, I think five goalies play this year, five different goalies. It, it reminded me a lot of 2018, 19 where the flyers really struggled that year. And they had so many guys. I can't even name them. Like I can name Carter Hart, Anthony Stolarz, Neuverth, Picker, like, Cam Talbot, like, I, I don't know. There were so many goalies that came in that year. It was like seven or eight goalies. This year, we had five. Yeah, five. Like, you, 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 we're like the devils this year. Like, you can't have that many goalies just playing through the system. And the goalies at first play well. Like, Samuel Larson, 23, 19, and 7, a 2.82 and a .890. That stat line was way better before the last couple of games of the season. The issue was we were overplaying the hell out of him. And listen, is it his fault? No, it's the Flyers' fault. It's most definitely the Flyers' fault. Because whenever they, Urson was the most reliable guy. Who are you going to start? Felix Sandstrom? Cal Peterson? Fedotov? Like, and you definitely can't start Carter Hart, who, by the way, had a 12-9-3 record, a 2.80 and a .906. Uh, he will not be back with this team due to the sexual assault allegations, which, first off, Good that, he's, good that he's facing some justice for that. But second, it's pretty goddamn annoying that, you know, of course, of course that has to happen. Of course, we're, of course, the one time we get a really good goal, I'm being careful how I say this, one time we're getting a really good goalie, of course he gets convicted of something like that. That isn't, like, once we finally get a goalie that isn't, you know, isn't shaky, like actually has like a solid future in that, Something like that happens to him. It, it's it's really annoying, and and I do hope that that Hart gets justice, but uh, I I think he should. It's rightfully deserved, but it just it's just annoying to have that kind of I guess luck on our team. I guess if if you guys if you guys get what I'm saying, I'm not saying that it's right that you know I'm not saying that he shouldn't have been because he's on the Flyers, but yeah. Uh, so. Felix Sandstrom, 1-2, a 3.87 and a .823. Cal Peterson, 2-2, two and two, a 3.90 and a .864. And then Fedotov, 1-1 one one, with a 4.95 and a .811. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I mean, like, Fedotov came over midway through the year uh, when we were, like, really fighting to get it back in a playoff spot because we just could not win a game to save our lives. Um... Fedotov, I think he's just too tall. I think you got to get him adjusted to the NHL level too. So I would imagine that 
Um, there's a good chance that we see either Sandstrom or Peterson get traded or bought out. But the only thing is, though, is that, you know, both those guys have, you know, one-year contracts left, so why buy them out and pay them for the next two years? I don't know. I don't know. I honestly don't know what the tandem is going to look like next year either. You have four goalies in the system, like, and then it got Kolosov down below, so, like, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know, like, how this is going to work. I would imagine, I feel like a goalie in this list is going to get traded. I It wouldn't surprise me. I don't think Fedorov goes. Urson definitely doesn't go. I think it's going to be between Sandstrom or Peterson. They just need to realize the fact that um, they can't run with that many goalies in the system. Like, you're going to have you're, you're going to have Kolosov playing in the ECHL. I mean, I've been to a lot of Royals games. I would love to see Kolosov at that level. Um, and I will be going to a lot of them next season. But... Like, it d- doesn't make sense for his development. So, w- we'll see what happens there, but that's something that I've been thinking about as well. So, in terms of ins and outs this year, trades that happened, guys that were, you know, put on waivers and stuff. Uh, ins, Jamie Drysdale, Ryan Johansson, uh, Eric Johnson, Dennis Gurianov, a first, a second, and a fifth. Uh, so, not bad there for the ends. I think Briere did a really good job. I've made videos before. I think I even made a video about Briere. Um, outs, Cutter Gauthier, Sean Walker, uh, Wade Allison, and a fourth and a fifth. So, I would say the Walker trade worked out very well. The Carter Gauthier trade, we didn't have a whole lot of luck there. I think it's good we got someone like Drysdale back in return. Um, as for, you know, the other guys, they were just deadline players. I don't expect them to be, be back next year. Uh, it would shock me if we re-sign Eric Johnson. Please don't. Uh, so that's it for 23-24. And I know I kind of went a little bit more in-depth than I've been with brother previous teams because obviously this is my favorite team and I, I have more of an opinion on them than I do per se like the Buffalo Sabres last last video even though that video was a pretty lengthy one as well uh so draft capital they have two firsts they have the uh 12th overall pick and the 20 and the 31st or the 32nd depending on where Florida wins the cup at uh of course Florida's won the cup uh two t- two seconds uh one third no fourth two fifths two sixths and one seventh so this team is 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 in desperate need to hit this draft out of the park, especially since the fact that we were supposed to be not great this year. We were supposed to really amp up the prospect pool. Especially if Mishkov's coming over next year. Like, we need some prospects. We need some people to build around him. Because now I have this this worry in the back of my head that not everyone's going to want to play for Philly because of Cutter Gauthier. Thanks, Cutter. But it's not the first time that's happened. Um... So I think as well as that too, they need to hit on the later picks too. Like they got two, they got two fifths and two sixths. Hit on those. Get some solid prospects in the later rounds of the draft that can become legitimate NHLers. Um, I do think though this team, if a lot of them come over next year, like Massimo Rizzo, Denver, Denver Barkey, um, if Bobby Brinkin stay up in the system next year, Oliver Bonk as well. Um, I think that even if Mitchkoff comes over, there's some decent, there's some decent names there just going to take some time for them to get mostly developed besides Mitchkov. I think Mitchkov would come over right away and play pretty well. So in terms of the UFAs and RFAs, it isn't a very long list. It's not a very long list whatsoever, actually. You got Dennis Gurionov, Eric Johnson, and Mark Stahl as your UFAs. I think you let all of them go. Two of those guys are deadline players. Gurionov couldn't find himself in the lineup. Uh, Johnson, the same thing. And Stahl is too old and is not a good, and is not a great defenseman whatsoever. Um, so... I think it's a good chance we see him retire. We'll see. But I, I don't think Mark Stahl comes back next year. RFAs, Zamula and Hart. I think you keep Zamula around. Zamula had a pretty good year on the blue line. I don't think it was expected either for him to come up, for, for him to be a NHLer this year. But I think that he got an opportunity to and he played pretty well. So keep him around for sure. Carter Hart, I said this things with Carter Hart. You don't qualify him. You don't keep him around. Uh, that's very obvious. Um, yeah. So, what do the Flyers need? Uh, everything. Um, I would say they need definitely prospects. I think if they, I think if they can find any way whatsoever to trade some guys away um, within reason and get some draft picks back in return, I'd be okay with that. If they could, if they could find a way to move up in the draft and maybe take a defenseman or a forward, I'd be fine with that too. Um, I think that they're gonna need maybe another goalie. Potentially, I know I said that there's a lot of guys in this in this system, and one of them may need to be traded, but we'll see. We could see like Cal Peterson in the ECHL. Like I I don't know what the hell they want to make that work, um, but I think that when you look in terms of 
this team. I think they're better off than they were at the end of last season. I think that, you know, with the 12th overall selection, things will get better for sure. Obviously, with a later round pick, it will too. But regardless, uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below in the Philadelphia Flyers. A much longer video here. Um, this is a season that was wild for me. It, it was a very fun season to watch this Flyers team. Um, and hopefully next year is the same thing. But I have no idea what to expect next year. But regardless, thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to like, subscribe down below. I would greatly appreciate it. Uh, if you could subscribe, that'd be awesome. We're getting closer to 3,000 subscribers every single day, every single sub. So thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Adios.